My name is Lindile. I am not alone. I am with the team Dimakazo, who is the um, secretary for the Stockfell. I'm also with Gertrude, who has <laughs> signed on with my profile. So don't be surprised when you see two Lindiles there. Um, so she's also on the line. She's going to give you guys additional support if you've got any questions on the line and also just assisting with muting some of the people so that there's no um, background noise because we are recording the session. I'd like to welcome you and I'd like to appreciate you for spending this evening with us. You could have been anyway, but you are here with us. You know, time is the greatest gift that anyone can ever give you. So we do not take it for granted that these, this hour that you're gonna be spending with us is an hour that you could have been doing other things and yet you chose to spend it with us. So we do really appreciate it. So without wasting any more of your time, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to um, be projecting um, the, the, the presentation. In the meantime, feel free to introduce yourself on the chat line. Tell us where you're from. Let us know if you're already a member. I see some familiar names. So let us know if you're already a member. Um, so yeah, we look forward to today's session. So just, just make it engaging and interactive. If you feel like the, you're not sure, please, please, please ask rather. I prefer people who ask rather than assume um, that way we both on the same page. So yeah, feel free to ask the questions as and when they come across. Um, Dimagato and Gertrude are on the chat. They'll answer some of the questions and then we'll also leave some Q&A for towards the end of the session. So Gertrude, please let me know if you can see my screen so I can start projecting. Gertrude, are we good, Dima? I don't know if, can anyone let me know if you guys can see my screen because it's on my side it's showing it's sharing so give me a thumbs up give me a hi yes we yes, can. We can see thank you thank you Yanela. thank you Gertrude okay let's get straight into it okay so tonight we're going to be talking about the investment where we're actually going to be co-owning properties if you so I know some of the people also attended yesterday's uh, session which Gertrude was hosting so that's um, a different pro uh, proposition so we offer two investment options for our members so you've got a choice whether you want to do one or both it really is up to you so depending on you know your investment preferences you know your investment style and really what you want to do some some of the members start in the one and then they want to move on to the other one so it's totally up to you so today i'm going to be talking about the co-ownership option and i'll talk a bit more about the differences later on okay by way of introduction so my name is lindila lisiane you can feel free to check out my website www.meetslindila.com so just talking more about you know some of the stuff that i do and all of that so feel free to check that out I am the co-founder and chairperson of the Stockfell, and um, we the Stockfell started in July of 2019, and we've just been, you know, growing in leaps and bounds um, since then. Um, and we actually um, entered the um, the Property Investor of the Year Awards in 2019, and we actually won, you know, with the concept that we can had come up as a Stockfell. So it really has been, you know, um, something that has been unique in the way that we do things and really innovative, and that is why that we won that Investor of the year i'm also a stock fellow property coach and you know um, i've actually been blessed enough to actually been invited to come back this year but as a judge um for the same award so you know it really just goes to show you know the growth that we've had as a stock fell and the exposure that you know i've had as part of the journey that i've been traveling um in the in the in the property investment space so I do not work alone. I am with Udimakato Kabai, who is the secretary, as well as Gertrude Murabodi, who is our treasurer. And we also have Penny Mfeka, who is unfortunately not here tonight, but she is our admin assistant. So you might be dealing with her um, in some instances. Um, so she is also part of the team. She's based in Durban. Um, and um, myself, Dima and Gertrude are based here in Gauteng. So our wins, 
have been, you know, raising over 9 million rand. I think now we're actually more closer to about 10 million rand if we include the trust as well. So we've done really, really well. We've invested well over 10 properties. We've been featured on multiple media outlets. I think if you go to my website, you'd actually see some of the interviews that I've done because I try and, 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 and upload them there as well. You know, um, so we've been on ENCA, we've been on Power FM 702, you know, IOL a couple of times, the Property Magicians podcast, Stockville Talk a couple of times, you know, Massive Metro, as well as SAPC One, the SAPC One show, Daily Tetum. So, you know, and again, just speaking about Stockfells and how Stockfells have traditionally been used as a means of consumption, you know, so basically we put money together and either we then spend it towards groceries or we put money together and then we, um, actually use it on burial costs or we're just rotating money amongst members so really this new concept that we're using in, is to actually say how can we actually invest in assets that are going to generate revenue for the members i mean generate income you know passive income because our members don't have to worry about finding a property dealing with tenants dealing with what, whatever it comes uh, as part of being um, a property investor right so we have actually paid out over seven hundred and fifty thousand rand in passive income almost three quarters of a million rand have have been paid out these are what we call money babies we like talking about money babies when we talk about you know passive income because this is your money giving birth <laughs> to to more money and then having money money grand babies as well so this is how much has been paid out to our members since we actually launched and it's actually money that we have created and have enabled our members to achieve various goals you know um in terms of their financial freedom and then, so what are some of the common myths about investing in property? That these are some of the common myths that stop people from investing in property. And we've actually bust some of these myths, you know, and to say, you know, one of the common myths is that you are limited by how much cash you have. Through Sarkisies, where we started off with, where people could actually invest starting from 2,500 rand a month, you know, that's where we started. Now we've raised the bar, but I'm saying 10,000 rand. It's still, there's still not a lot of properties or there's not a lot that you can do if you want to be investing with 10,000 rand. So it's like, you know, there are options out there and you should not be limited by how much cash you get. And then if you obviously want to be a property investor, even you could, you know, look at other alternatives where you know not being limited by how much cash you have where you know you're investing you're using bonds or using other people's money and such you know so that is a limitation that is that, that you is, is self-imposed it's almost like you, know, you want to box yourself and you think oh i don't have enough cash and then that's it you know um, and then there's this misconception that you can do it by yourself, you know, so investing in property is a team sport, you need other people, you need people that are going to help you with finding opportunities, managing it, raising funds, you know, um, being your, your advising you around tax, around compliance, around legal stuff. So it really is so, so it really is something that requires you to work with other people. And it's very difficult for you to go very far if you know you are working by yourself. Um, so I don't know, I get you to someone who's busy just clicking on a laptop, someone if you can please just assist me with that. And then there's also this misconception about how you need to invest where you live, you know. So we live in Gauteng, for example, but we've invested in properties in Cape Town, we've invested in properties in Durban. Now we're actually taking, we're doing an official takeover of Poch. <laughs> we actually went there over the weekend and we're like, yo, there's so much potential in this area, you know. So now we are um, we're actually, um, you know, entering into new areas as well. So we're not limited by where we live. I mean, it, we didn't even spend an hour and a half on which is just here. So we literally were in and out um, on Sunday uh, this past weekend. So we're, you're not limited by where you live. You go where the opportunities are. And then there's also this misconception that, you know, now is not a good time to start at any given point in time. If you pick up a newspaper or an article online, it will always tell you about how this is not the right time. There's always going to be someone who's going to tell you that now is not a good time to start investing because either property prices are too low or they are too high or this or that. The economy is, is, is too high. It's a bubble or it's too low. La, 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 la. So there's always going to, depending on what your what your values are and what you believe, you will find something that will make uh, basically reconfirm what you believe. If you believe that there's always going to be opportunities, you are going to find opportunities. If you believe that you know there's there's there's, there's risk and there's scams or whatever, then that's the, the kind of information that you're going to be finding is going to confirm what you already believe. You know, and a lot of people believe that there's only one way to invest in property, and most people believe that you know you buy a, a flat or whatever or a property, you put tenants in, and then you know that's how you invest in property. There's 
many, many ways to invest in property. And as I said earlier, when I started this presentation that at Sakisizo, we actually have two ways that um, members can invest in property. So this just goes to show that there's more than one way to invest in property. And through Sakisizo, there's actually more than one way. But tonight I'm focusing on the ownership option. So what we did was just challenge the status quo around how stock fields are and what they what they can be used for. And I think that's been that's been the reason why Sakisizu has done like really, really well in a relatively short period of time. We've had members who, you know, just bought into the concept and you know, and the fact that you know we we are doing things in such a transparent public manner where anyone at any point in time has got full access in terms of what's going on from a financial perspective. They can see all the funds coming in, all the funds going out. They are, they know exactly exactly where we're investing in and especially with property being um, something that's done in a public space. If we say we're investing in a property, for example, I'll tell you more about um, the, the, the property that you're going to be buying. It's in Pochefstrom. I can give you the address. You know, you can go there tomorrow. <laughs> and, you know, so that's the thing. It's, it's very difficult um, to scam people with such a public good such as uh, a property because you can always go there and then you say, eh, do you guys know Slindy Lord? Do you know Sakisizu? Like, and people start looking at you scary if you're like okay what's going on do you get what i'm saying okay that don't go there <laughs> but i'm just saying that these are actually public um uh, properties is public you can even go to deeds office information and you can search the ownership and and and, and. so all those things are, are, are fairly public and then it's easy to actually verify okay so you know all of you guys are here and you've got various reasons why you're here. You've got various reasons why you were attracted to property or you were attracted to investing with the stock fell, you know. So all, for all of us, it's going to be different. You know, whether you're looking for financial freedom, you want to at some point earn enough money to retire or you want to just earn a passive income or you're looking at alternatives to maybe you said your money is currently sitting at the bank and you're like, what else can I be doing to earn more money? Or maybe you you, you really like, like um, um, in, in property, but you don't know where to start with it. A lot of our members actually, you know, start through Sakisi's way and then they're like, oh my gosh, or they realize that there's so many opportunities and there's so much things that they can do. It, they become exposed to how property investing works and that they then decide that they also want to become investors in their own right. So, you know, that's that's part of the, um, you know, the spillover effect of, um, of, of being in Sakisi's so because we share so much about, you know, what we do and how we do that it's actually now enabling our members to even think uh, differently about the way that they do things, you know, as well as to achieve other financial goals. Some, so some say, you know, I know that in a year or two time, I want to buy my own property. So I want to use this as a vehicle to raise the money towards that. Or I know I'm going to be pay, getting married. I want to start paying Lobola or whatever it is, you know, which all have our different reasons and so we join and then as a means of actually achieving that goal so it's important that you understand you know what's your why and what's driving you towards that so the benefits of investing in property are many guys i think it's trusted um and it's tried and tested over many centuries um there's a saying that it's thin as well you know so you know that you know a, a property is long lasting it can even outlast many generations it's fairly easy to understand guys um you know for example you know how to that a, a one bedroom for example let's say in the very same area a one bedroom will not cost the same as a three bedroom in terms of the purchase price as well as in terms of the rental you know for example that okay I've got a house i want to add value how can i add value it's simple you can extend it you can do this you can do that you can rezone so all of those things are fairly easy to understand even a child can tell you that if someone is staying in a bigger house it means that you know you know so it's like it's very easy to understand unlike maybe some of the other uh, asset classes for example shares if you were to ask me you know should you buy a medic clinic or a net care share i wouldn't know you know you need to pull out spreadsheets and look at their historical and look at who are their directors, what's their strategy, la 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 la, before you actually decide on which share to choose. If I were to ask you, should I buy a spa or a pick and pay share? I don't know, you know, so smaller does not necessarily, I mean, bigger does not necessarily mean better. It will depend on the fundamentals in the company. So there's this, so there's, so those kinds of things are not as intuitive to understand as what property is. It provides stable growth. I mean, if you look at it might have little dips here and there due to COVID last year or whatever. But if you look at the trajectory, the trajectory, ish guys, English trajectory <laughs> over the past couple of years, you know, the, the flag is going upwards. And I mean, not the flag, the um, line, what do you call it? 
that one, <laughs> the graph <laughs> is going upwards, you know, it's going in an upward uh, uh, direction. So property is one of those things that, you know, there's always going to be demand for housing. That's just never going to go away, um, you know, so there's always going to be a stable growth on that, on that perspective. And then obviously cash flow, if it's managed properly, there's rental income and the income pays for the expenses, so that can provide um, cash flow. And then it's based on a tangible asset, you know, that you can feel there's just something about owning property that, you know, you, there's even that show, what is it, Kugitila, like this is our home, because people want to feel, see and touch things, you want to know that, you know, this is uh, something that I'm, I'm working towards, you know, you want to provide a roof over our heads, so basically, if you're investing in property as a tangible asset, it's, it's, I don't know, it's it's just got something more than, you know, like your paper-based or like your digital assets, like, you know, you buy a share and then you just see a number on the screen or you've got a unit trust, you see a number on the screen. Yes, it's nice, but I mean, property is like something like you can actually go in, you know, if, if all things, if, if all else fails, you can go and sleep in your house. You know, if you can decide you don't want to rent it anymore and you can go and stay there and like, you know, uh, you can't sleep under your shares, you know, on the screen <laughs> you know um and then it also prov provides the, the ability to leverage i'll actually cover that later on in the presentation what leverage is so basically leverage means that you you are able to acquire to get a bigger asset with little money so for example you are able to put down let's say a 10 percent deposit on a million rand property so you're putting in hundred thousand but then the property is actually worth a million rand so there's not a lot of assets that allows you to do that where you can go to the bank and say okay uh, dear standard bank i want to buy a million rand worth of mtn shares please can you borrow me a hundred thousand rand you know so it does it's not gonna fly try it guys <laughs> you know and then also it's a feel good business guys you know you're providing um accommodation for for homes for students you know you can take a property that's run down and you can fix it and can provide comfortable accommodation um you know so yourself you are helping the country to solve um you know uh, the housing crisis so whether it's normal um housing for for just normal families or you're providing student housing you know that our universities simply just don't have the capacity for actually um, housing all the students. So by becoming a, a, an investor in the student accommodation space, you are actually doing um, good. So it's actually more like a social investment in a way because you are helping the government solve a problem that they are not able to otherwise. And that is why you know like NASFAS and all of those people come in to pay to pay for the accommodation because they know that you know the university simply cannot cope. So how is this going to work, right? So basically, the idea is to co-own property. So obviously, the property for for what you'll be contributing, you there's going to be all the members are going to become the co-owners, and then we're going to be co-owning the property with M5 because they are investment partner. So the minimum contribution for that will be ten thousand one hundred rand, and um, you know, so we uh, the idea is to make investments quarterly, but that will depend on how much money we are able to raise. So take for example, um, we started raising funds for towards this property last year. Must have been around October. And we still haven't raised our target. So it really does depend on how quickly we are able to raise the money. But very understanding that you know the trust was only rich, um, was only launched in November. You want something? And, um, so we haven't yet had uh, um, you know sufficient time to to for the members to get comfortable with this new concept so they still know the old stock fell where we were just doing funding so they, they sort of in the rhythm and they understand how that works but the trust is still fairly new to everyone so that's why it's taking us a bit uh, a bit longer but the idea is to raise um is to make investments quarterly and to achieve and to um target at least a million rand for the purchase price because that's where we feel is the happy medium in terms of getting good um, properties because anything under that, then we, we sort of, um, you know, are limited in terms of options. So, and um, the 100 Rand that's over that at 10,000 Rand is for platform charges. So the platform that we use, it's called Stockfella, which they are a financial services provider. You can go to their website and you can see um, their uh, phase um, disclosures around compliance, around the FSP and all their licenses. So, so they essentially work like a bank, but the beautiful, uh, beauty about this bank is if you need to get statements, we don't have to go to the bank and get three people to sign, la, 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 la. From the minute that you join, you can get a full history 
of what's been going on in this particular account for the past 90 days, up to 90 days. And as a member, you're even entitled to request going back until from the time that, you know, we launched the stock file, you can get full history of um, what's been happening on that account, which you are more than welcome to do if that's what you if that's what you want. So total transparency in, um, from that regard. And so obviously for that service, there is a charge, for example, you know, when you're making a deposit or withdrawal, there's, there's, there's deposit and withdrawal charges. So hence we've actually made provision for that additional 100 rand. So there's no training fees except for that 100 rand for the platform charge. And then we've got like, um, legal and administration costs that will be incurred, which will be around about an average of 10% of the contributions made. So we had to have a trust registered. We need to pay um, the attorney um, for actually drafting resolutions and, and, and many other documentation that will be required for the stock file and legal things. So those costs need to be taken care of and they will be around about 10% uh, per contribution. Okay, so the stock file, and the trust will coexist as two entities. So the stock file will be used primarily as means of raising the funds. So once we've got, let's say for example, um, as I've said, we're looking at raising a million rand a month in a quarter. So, so that that million rand will be in the um, will be raised in the in the stock file. And so that will be sitting on the on stock file. So once we've raised the million rand, the money can then move over to the trust away. Then from there, we will then be able to purchase the property. Right. So that is why those two um, um, entities will coexist. And then the other stock file that does funding as well will also coexist. So you will have a choice whether you want to you know, become a, a, an owner of a property or you just want to do funding, short term investment, you're in, you're out, or you are actually with us for the long haul. So think about the one for funding is just like dating, you're in, you're out, you'll decide, no, I don't like this girl. She's no, then, you know, you just dump her and you move on with your life. Whereas the other one is marriage, you know. So if you decide you don't like us, it's complicated. We need to get divorce attorneys. We need to decide what happens to the children and, 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 and. So think about that as well, that the, the ownership option is more of a long term and your exit is not going to be as smooth as it is in the funding one. So that's something to bear in mind. Okay, so what's a trust, guys? I think I've mentioned a lot about what a trust is, so I'm not gonna assume that you guys know, but I mean, um, it's basically a legal entity. If you think about it, it's similar to a company. So the reason why we've actually um, decided on a, a trust story is so that it would be nearly impossible to have a hundred people's name on a title deed, guys. Like it would just not make any sense whatsoever. So the trust is a legal entity that basically has legal personality. Think of it as it, it's like a person, but a, 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 not obviously doesn't live and breathe. So it can enter into agreements, it can buy property, it can pay tax, it can, you know, um, it basically can have a life of its own. Um, and that is why the properties will be owned by the trust and then the members will be the beneficiaries. So think of beneficiaries as sort of like your shareholders. So basically the trust buys the assets and then the, then it, um, the trustees, which are almost equivalent to directors, if you think about it from that perspective, are the ones that manage the affairs of the trust. So, so the trustees will be myself as well as Dimakato and then Tao Rai Jack and Reza Van Royen. So the four of us are going to be um, the trustees. So from the Stockfell side, the representative is myself and Dima, and then from M5 side, it's Reza and Tao Rai. So the four of us are going to be the trustees. So our responsibilities are to make sure that we look after the members' interests. So, and then over and above that, we have an independent trustee who is to make sure that you know we comply with all the legal and tax requirements and that obviously we are always acting um to the best interest of the beneficiaries at all points in time so uh, and then um so that is going to be thomas falun so thomas falun is um, very much experienced in the trust space. He actually set up the old mutual inter vivos trust department. He's been a, a lecturer at the University of Pretoria around trust law. He's got over 24 years experience, guys. He's highly, highly, highly experienced. So he is just the sort of person that we need to make sure that, you know, we, um, you know, color very nicely between, you know, uh, the lines of the law and we don't you know, start coloring outside and that we're always just compliant from that perspective. Okay, I think I've covered that. If you guys, um, you know, I, um, have got any questions, please, 
please feel free to just drop it on the on the chat and then we'll we'll, we'll deal with them afterwards i know i'm going through some of the stuff very quickly and if you're hearing for it for the first time it might be a bit confusing but yeah we definitely want to make sure that you guys do understand and that you are on board with everything okay and then, so why I trust, I think I've covered this at a high level in terms of it, it's got continuity. You know, all of us here, you know, one day, you know, we are mere mortals, we will die at some point, but the trust will continue. And so, especially when it comes to those of you who are looking at creating legacies for your children and your grandchildren. So one day, you know, for example, we've got the Ingonyama Trust in KZN, we've got this trust for these trust fund babies. You know, somebody once this said, said, sat down around the table or we are sitting around a virtual table and decided to start something like this, you know? And so one day when we are no longer here, the trust will continue to be here. It's not a mortal being, it's immortal. It can outlive us for many, many years. So one day your children will be, great, will be glad, sorry, that on the 1st of April, you actually went and attended a webinar because now they're continuing to benefit from the decision that you made on the 1st of April, 2021, you know? So it's got continuity beyond our lives as trustees, our the trustees may change you know the beneficiaries may change it might be you initially you might then decide your children you might then decide your grandchildren your grand-grandchildren literally it I can outlive us for many many generations you know and then you're also able to utilize the services, knowledge, and abilities of trustees. So we've got, you know, Tarai and we've got Reza. Tarai is very good, and I think you guys know him. And, and Reza, she's been killing it in the student accommodation space, especially. So, and, and then ourselves as well as Dima and, 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 and myself and Dima as well. So you guys are um, able to leverage of our services, our knowledge, and our experience so that it benefits you as the beneficiaries. You know, for example, we went to check out the property over the weekend and we raised a couple of concerns, you know, obviously coming through as a, you know, with a different lens. Um, and we raised a couple of concerns about what we saw on the property and already that's being addressed. So, you know, so it's like, um, you know, you're, 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 so we are the trustees that are making sure that you you benefit from our knowledge and our experience and all of those things. You know, so the, 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 the assets are protected, you know, from being squandered as well, because they are not in, in, in your individual name. So say, for example, one of you gets divorced or whatever, your husband even if you're married in communal property, technically does not have a right to your assets that are sitting in a trust. So whether it's this one or any other trust, hint, hint for those who want to, you know, anyway, don't say I told you. But anyway, you then, because then it's not your assets, it's the trust asset. So that way, you know, if whatever happens in your case, whether you get in debt, because sometimes you can go into debt and then your assets may need to be attached or repossessed. The assets that are sitting in a trust cannot be repossessed because they're technically not yours. They are the trust assets, you know, or even if um, you, even if you pass away, you, the, the, the beneficiaries that you would have nominated, they continue uh, benefiting and it doesn't form part of your estate, which means means the government can touch it through state duties and executors. You know, those lawyers that like, hey, we're happy to help you. They charge money. So that's not going to form part of your estate. So those are just some of the other benefits. Okay, um, um, that's just some, it, it, there's a lot of benefits, guys. I think um, if I can go on about the benefits of trust, we'll be here all day. Let's move on to who our partners are, right? So as I've said, M5 Property Addicts is our partner from a sourcing perspective. So they find us really, really good deals, as well as just from managing the managing the projects, so managing the construction. So um, so myself and Dima and everybody else, and you guys are at home chilling now, uh, whereas, you know, um, the guys from M5 are actually making sure that we've got a project manager on site to oversee the construction that's currently happening on the property. We, once the students start moving in, hopefully next week, there's somebody to check them in, sign leases, and, 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 and make sure they behave so the neighbors don't complain. Somebody's got to do it, and we're glad it's not going to be us. <laughs> you know, so that's why we've got them. They've got the experience and the knowledge and the systems to make all of that happen. So we just have to worry about that. And then we've got Elise, who's going to be our legal partner, um, just to help us from that perspective as well. And as I've said, then we've also got Stockfeller, who is our platform partner. So that's where all the money sits until it's actually transferred out into the trust. So what's the current investment opportunity? We've got a property in Pochefstrom in Chief Albert Lutuli Street. Um, it's a 17 bed student accommodation property. It's very, very close to the University of the Northwest, formerly known as Poch University or Booker, some of the people know it. 
and then it's NESFAS accredited, and then the minimum investment is 10,100 rand, which we require by the 21st of April. Don't worry, guys. This is not one of those fake scarcity things that people show you on, on online. This is a real thing. What happened is that we've signed an offer to purchase um, for the property, and then we've got 30 days in which to pay the purchase price. So we've, in order to secure the property and to move in and start some of the the, the renovations, we've paid a 200,000 rent deposit. So now we need to raise that the, um, the balance, right? So we the, so the purchase price was a million rand and the estimated renovation costs are about 300,000. And then we've got another 100,000 or so for furniture and then other purchase costs about 120,000 rand. Right, so that's the money that we need to raise. So that's about 1,570,000, which we need to raise by the 21st of April. And then, so the property will generate a monthly income of 53,720. Our expenses, which include water, rates, a security, caretaker, management, and, 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 comes about 24,956. And then the net cash flow is 28,000. 764 rands so which is quite an awesome cash flow which should be able to uh, pay us very nicely so if you guys are looking for more details or you want to see the proposal you can go to this link uh it's bit.ly stroke porch investor pack so make sure that the p the, the porch the p is uppercase otherwise it won't work so it's bit.ly stroke porch investor pack Make a note of it, you can go and just download the investor pack and then it's got all the details and then some of the pictures which I'll also show you here. So more about these numbers and all of those things. So if you need more details, you can go to that link. So this is basically how the property looks. As you can see, you know, some of the rooms here will be able to accommodate three students. So that's the beauty with, you know, like student accommodation, unlike normal rentals, you can't put three, you know, working class people in, in a room, you know, whereas with student accommodation, we can do that, which means you can get more money, you know. So that's why student accommodation is so lucrative. It's because of, you know, things like this where you've got, you know, uh, three students in one room. There's another three. We went this weekend and that property can easily handle 17 to 20 students you know so whereas if it has been used as a normal home uh, probably the rental I, ten thousand did a stretch you know that's what it would be but now because we're putting in students we're able to get more than 50 grand on it you know so yeah and then so in terms of the progress update um we've raised um, 912,000 so far which 200,000 rand was just in the last week. So, you know, we're getting a lot of people signing up. Our members are contributing. They, they don't wanna, you know, miss this opportunity because once we raise the money, then, you know, then the opportunity closes. So um, the million rand was offered and accepted and occupation granted. So as you can see, some of the renovation work has actually started. Um, I'm actually gonna post, so that the project manager has actually sent me a video of the, the work that they've done. So this was, you know, as we went over the weekend, this is how it still looked. So I've actually got more recent videos and pictures and I'll, I'll post it onto our YouTube videos and you guys can see, so yeah. And then we've paid that deposit for 200,000 rand because obviously we wouldn't have been able to start breaking down someone's house unless he saw that we were serious. So the fact that we put 200,000 rand gave him comfort that, okay, you guys can move in. Even though transfer hasn't yet happened, you guys can start doing the renovation. So once we raise the balance of the purchase price, because we're not going to be raising a bond, we're going to be buying it all cash. So we're fairly close to the million rand, at least. <laughs> <laughs> we're fairly close to raising that million rand which is the purchase price um and then um then the garage conversion is currently underway so the garage is basically going to be um and we, we, so basically we don't need a garage um so we're going to actually just convert that into additional rooms um so that's currently underway and then we're also adding additional bathrooms as well because we're putting in a lot of students so we need to make sure that we can actually accommodate them using um the right number of bathrooms and then we're also then partitioning some of the rooms because this, this was like a normal house it was like a three-bedroom house so we're taking like some of the lounge and the very spacious dining and and then so we're partitioning it so that it's like different rooms and that it provides certain level of privacy for the students that are going to be there so all of that is currently in progress um so the guys up behind Behind. It was supposed to have been finished by this week, but they said that they're going to be working over the Easter break. So by next early next week, um, all the work should be done and then we should be able to start taking in students. 
Um, and then, so what are our future plans? Um, so I don't know if you guys were following us on our Facebook Live, you would have seen us showing just what sort of the neighbors are doing in that area. Like three of our neighbors behind all have got like higher, like uh, two to three floors of like, they've got like flats actually. Um, and then also like what we call front opposite. So just across the road, there's like a block of flats. So literally everyone is just like building flats in that area. And so the space in that yard actually does allow for actually building flats. So what we can do here is that we can rezone it because at the moment it's owned for residential. It's like a normal family home. So the idea is to rezone it for higher density, which means we can now build, means we can then get, um, you know, we, once we get the rezoning done, we can then build more units or blocks of flats. Um, uh, we can potentially then um you know um apply for a commercial loan and then we get that money out and that money that we've put in as cash can then be used towards building costs and then we can just recycle that money like that you know so those are some of the future plans that we could be looking at um doing um in the near future um and then in terms of the sign up process it's fairly easy you can even do it right now if you want um you can go to stockfeller so you can go to your Play Store. I don't know if I give it, should give you guys a few minutes just to try and see if you can find the app. So you can go to Stockfella, S-T-O-K-F-E-L-L-A. -L -L or if you are like me and you're like, no, not another app, <laughs> you can go to the website www.stockfella.com. So Stockfella spelled like that. So you can go to the website. What you then do is you can create... Um, a profile so you enter your name your surname your email address and your cell phone number please make sure that you enter it correctly because that will be authenticated meaning that they will need to test that it's correct so they'll send you a one-time pin which you'll need to put back onto the system to make sure that they have the right contact details we have the right contact details should we need you for anything so please make sure that you are putting in um, valid um, contact details i will then receive the notifications on my phone and then once I receive them, I will approve it. And once I've approved it, you will then receive an email that will have the payment details that you must use. So when making a payment, Oh, did I tell you that you need to first search for and join the group trust Sakisizwe Property Stockfeller? You'll see that there's other um, Sakisizwe groups on Stockfeller, but if you're looking at ownership via the trust, this is the group that you need to join. Please, please, please make sure, because if you join any of the other groups, we are assuming good winner, you don't want to be a Mastandi, you want to do the other investment option, so it's going to go towards that. So please, please, please make sure that you're joining the right group. Um, so once that has happened, you'll receive that, pay, that confirmation email with your reference number. You make a payment. Please use that reference number because that's the only way that the system can allocate the payment to you. If you're already on Stockfeller, either you're in our current Stockfeller and you want to move over to the trust option or you've got any other Stockfeller um, on Stockfeller, you will, need, you will have a new reference number. So make sure that you are using the correct reference number so that the... the the, the payment goes to the right group. Please, please, please make sure of that. And then you need to make your minimum payment of the 10,100 Rand by the 21st of April, guys. It's very, very important. And the thing is, the sooner we raise that money, the sooner we're going to close that opportunity. As you guys saw, we're already sitting on just over 900,000 Rand. So, and about just over 200,000 Rand was in the last week. So, I feel fairly confident that we should be able to raise the rest of the money fairly soon. So, if you leave it until the 21st of April, you might find that we've already um, closed it off. Um, and then, you know, if you need to get hold of us, you can email info at Sakisusa Property Stockfell and we will attend to your questions or you can also WhatsApp or call us on 0680857962. I'd like to thank you for, you know, dialing in tonight and spending time with us. If I'm going to stop sharing now so that I can see if there's any questions and yeah. Okay, let us see. So someone was saying, yes, we can. I'm assuming you're, you're saying you, you can hear me. Um, and Yanela was saying, I've just invested this week. I'm a new member. Yes, you are new to the trust, Yanela, but you're not new to the stocks. <laughs> um, and then, um, 
says, hi, not a member yet, but would like to invest in the build student accommodation project room. So yes, you can definitely join as per the instructions that I've just given. You download the app, create your profile, request to join the trust group, and then we'll approve you. And then Ephraim was saying, sorry, guys, I don't know what was happening. And then what's the return on the investment uh, percentage wise? Okay, so this one here, unlike with the funding one, it's fairly simple for us to say, you know, it's a loan, it's 10% per annum, la, 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 la. For this one, it really is going to be a function of what's our income, what's our expenses, you know, and then how much is available for us to then distribute. But traditionally, with our normal stock fund, we've been able to give nothing less than 10%, so it shouldn't be any different here. But again, I don't really want to say this is definitely going to be guaranteed because there's just so many variables that are at play, unlike with the funding stock fund where you know you're going to get your 10% no matter what. This one here, there's many variables. Um, for example, if we don't get any students, that means there's no money. It means you don't get paid, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's different. Um, that's like for example if, if the property is vacant it means there's no money coming it means we can't pay anyone uh, or if the, the roof get blown off or then we need to do maintenance and in that meantime we spend all that money towards that or whatever I'm just making an example here so I can give an indication but I can't say definitely no maganjani that's how much you're going to get on a monthly basis um, and then how do you qualify for the returns you qualify for the returns by investing and contributing towards that property. So as soon as, so we're going to make be making quarterly payouts, unlike in our funding stock for where we pay monthly for this one, we're going to pay in quarterly. And this is just purely due to the fact that this is just such a heavily legislated in, um, um, a trust is like heavily legislated. We need to do resolutions. We need to take care of tech staff and, 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 and. So it just wouldn't be practical to do it on a monthly basis. So we're going to be doing it um, quarterly. So as soon as we start putting students in and start earning money, then, um, every quarter will then make um, the distributions. And then also bearing in mind that NASFAS pays quarterly as well. So we might just need to time it with when does we receive the income from the government. Who are the architects? Um, you are assuming the contractors. I'll have to get you the name of who they are. Kakati, please drop me an email. Um, I don't know who the people who are doing the actual work. I don't know the company name, but I can find that for you. And then Caesar says, I hear it's a long-term investment, but is there an exit strategy for this investment? So the exit strategy, right, is to sell the property. We can sell it. Or like I said to you that we can um, get the rezoning. Once the rezoning is done, we get our money out. We get apply for a commercial um, commercial uh, loan. That way, if it gets approved, then the trust takes on that loan. And then that, that million rent is now out, which means that we can then go and buy another property with it or whatever, and we can always sell it. So if we sell it, again, the members then benefit according to whatever share that they, 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 they have of the property. So let's say, for example, we need a million rand and you've put 10,000 rand, it means you've got a 1% share. I'm just using random figures here. It means you've got a 1% share, right? So in the income that's going to be coming, you've got a 1% share of that monthly income. So should we sell it, you're also then going to benefit from 1% of the proceeds of those sales. So then that's... Um, um, another way of doing it so that we can we can do the rezoning once the rezoning is done the property value automatically increases and we can sell it at that value to another investor and we call it quits if this doesn't work that's another strategy or we can go through and build the additional um uh, units and then sell it at a higher price once those units are there as well there's there's, there's many um there's many things that we could consider but the idea is to hold it it's to buy and hold and not to do flip um um, and then, so so Getrud is just sharing some of the, um, the information. How For how long will you be contributing quarterly? So it's totally up to you. So if you want to contribute once and then say, you know what, guys, peace, I'm done. I don't want to contribute anymore. You then only going to become, you're only going to be earning income from this particular property. So next time when we invest into another property and you haven't contributed, you then don't have a stake in that property. So it's totally up to you. You contribute once and stop. You contribute more and continue. It's totally up to you. So we'll leave it up to you to decide how long you want to contribute for. But our plan is to, you know, get quite aggressive in terms of the number of properties that we buy. So we'd like to be buying every quarter. But you as an individual, if you don't want to continue, that's up to you. Okay. Anyone want to have any more questions or want to come online and ask live? Feeling brave?
I'm seeing some requests coming through. Um, yeah, but I'll deal with those a bit later. There are no further questions, guys. Either I did a very good job or I did a very bad job and confused, and confused you all. <laughs> okay, then, if there are no more questions, I shall release you. Firstly, we have Vianella. She has raised her hand. Okay, uh, please can you unmute her? No, I was actually clapping. It's an emoji. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Thank you to the Chris Bobs. Sorry, sorry to see that. <laughs> no worries. Thank you, Yanela. Thank you so much. Okay, and then if there are no other questions, let's call it a night, guys. Thank you so much. Hmm? There's a message from uh, Ephraim. Okay, Ephraim. Uh, Ephraim uh, says, same. I think you've covered most of the stuff. I thank you, Ephraim. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Kakati Mapiri is asking, can you email us the presentation? If you want the presentation, please drop us an email, info at sakisuserpropertystockfile.co.za and we will make sure that you receive a copy. Hoitsi Mudimo has his hand up. Um, sure, you can ask Hoitsi Mudimo. Ashley. Come again? Hello. Yes, we can Hello. hear you. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm actually streaming all the way from Botswana. Okay. Yeah, I've been I've been following you for quite some time and I've been trying to get hold of you on email, but I actually at first I actually wanted to join so I problem with the with the app, with the stock filler app because there is somewhere where you're supposed to enter something like a country code or something, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I couldn't find my. Yeah. Ish. So I've actually been, yeah, I've been trying to 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 join for some time, and uh, it's been a struggle, eh? Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, um, Stockfeller only works within like with the SEDEC region and only within the common monetary areas, right? So. Um, which would be like your Lesotho, Namibia, um, Swaziland. That's where like mm -hmm. the rand to that currency is one for one. But because you guys are like richer than us, so you know you the, the pula is stronger than the rand. So that's why it doesn't work in Botswana. Um, so unfortunately, that's the limitation with the app that we're using. So that's why you have been battling from that perspective. So even though we do have some members that are based outside of those um uh, those regions what they tend to do is that they get like a south african number they, get, they can receive the sms's so that you can receive that otp and then they then register that way so unless you've got um a family or friend in south africa that can just get that authentication step done for you or you've got an SMS or a number that can receive um, SMSs with a South African number. That's unfortunately the limitation with the app that we're using. Okay, all right, no, no, I get it. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've, we've actually been starting to, to try something of that sort this side. Um, it's actually, I was just, I just I just discussed it with my friends to uh, and see if we can if you can copy the same thing as yours because uh, like you are saying it's gonna be difficult if I'm um, to do all the I mean the registration from this side kind of stuff but anyway I'll, I'll keep in touch I'll keep in touch maybe you can just uh, take me through this journey and see if I can we, we can make it this side. Eh? Absolutely. You know, you send me an email and let's chat. You can send me an email, silindile at sakisuzapropertystockfile.co.za so we can take the conversation offline. All right, great. Thank you. All right, you're welcome, Fritz Modimo. Um, okay, anyone else? All right then, guys. Have a good evening. Happy Easter for those who are Eastering this weekend. <laughs> have a, and, and travel safely and please uh, come back COVID free guys we are still having a, a, a pandemic pandemic <laughs> it's 
so please um you know you know you know what you do stay safe sanitize social distance and enjoy time uh, away with your loved ones and hopefully um we'll see you guys um next week and you will join and uh, um join us and let's do this good night Dima, get through anything you want to say before we, before, we hang, before we finish? Oh, that's about it. Good night for me as well. Have a great Easter weekend, everybody. Dima? Good night, everyone. Thank you that you could join us. Hello. Okay, there's a hand up from Tep. Okay, everyone can drop off if you want to drop off. So we're just going to handle the question from Tepang Tepang Sorry, guys, <laughs> if my pronunciation is butchering your name. Tsepangone, uh, you can go ahead. Let me unmute you. You can unmute yourself and ask the question. Okay, Precious is unmuted. Maybe you can go ahead. Precious, you can ask them while we wait for Tepang on it. Okay. okay, can you hear me, guys? Yes, we yes, can hear you. Can Everyone hear else who wants to drop off, you're more than welcome to drop off. We're just going to handle those questions okay. for the people that still want to ask some further questions. But you're welcome to drop off. We're done. Okay, Precious, you can go ahead. Okay, I mean, I mean, I just joined it me, so I was not able to hear anything, but I can see that it was recorded. So I just want to find out where can I get the recording? Am I able to actually um, go through the presentation again? Um, yes, we will share the presentation. Usually, our we, we normally upload onto our YouTube channel. So if you just go to YouTube, so this is a property stock file, you will we'll upload it there. We also have some of our previous webinars are also there. So feel free to go to YouTube. We'll upload it uh, probably over the early next week because we're having Easter break. So early next week, it'll be up. Okay, cool. All right. Align ourselves to a white brand. Oh, so says, I actually wanted to type thank you. So a hand rose is close to the hand emoji. It's a high five. <laughs> Thanks, Tabangoni. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Um, I still see people are still hanging around. I don't know if you guys are shy to ask questions. Let me just stop the recording. Um, and then maybe people will be free.